This guard is fat. You don't think he could chase off a pickpocket, let alone solve any real crimes. Good day, sir. Yes, it certainly is. I would stay in chat, but I must be going. We've got so much happening today. Rayford wanted me to go get something, but I can't remember. We so rarely have public executions. You are coming to the public square, right? Of course, friend. I wouldn't miss this. Excellent. See you there. May crime always cower in the light. Indeed. Well, this should be an interesting day. Uh, I should make my way to the public square, eventually. It's the sigil for the sheriff's office. If you're lucky and smart, you won't spend too much time in there. The door is locked. She appears to be busy at the moment. Oh, hello, my lord. Oh, well, then, uh, hello. I must be on my way now. Take care. This young man is vigorously hammering away at a pair of horseshoes. He looks like a decent chap. Good day, sir. Hello there. My name is Niels. I'm the assistant and farrier to the blacksmith. I'm preparing shoes for the horses. It's quite lovely. Thank you. They take me where I need to go. I made the chair myself. It's a pretty quiet town. Never much trouble. Except for Gorth. He's always causing trouble. Surprised Rayford hasn't beaten him senseless yet. He's a local sheriff. He's a tough man, but he's always decent to me. Yes, there's an execution taking place soon. I want to finish these shoes before I head down. Take care, stranger. Hey, they have horses, and hey, what do you say? A potted plant hangs above the stable. It looks like no one tends it. Well, it's no market of wall, but you suppose they have the kinds of supplies that could help you survive here? You've come down the street and you notice two shops. One is a tobacconist's shop and the other is a general store. You peer along the massively stocked shelves of the store you spy several interesting items. SPF 80 plus sunscreen for those hot Lanarian summers. Large sacks of flour sit on the floor of the shop, waiting to be purchased by some sucker who has to carry that much flour. She's a stout but sweet looking lady. You bet she could kill you faster than any other man you've ever met. Hello, young master. Welcome to the Owens General Store in Meat Emporium. Butcher shop. Meat Emporium sounds like a whorehouse. Oh, you'd know a whorehouse, wouldn't you? Maybe. I found you in one. You were the chamber pot, boy. You were the chamber pot. I love you, dear. Love you too, honey buddy. Oh, this is lovely. Hey, you tried running a store with your significant other. You have to do something to keep yourself from going nuts. Understood. Well, we're just about to close up to go to the execution. So if you need something, just stop on back afterwards, okay, honey? 
Will do. You do stay pleasant. He looks like he enjoys butchering things. Probably a good way to deal with the stress of being married to Gwen. They said to come back later. You should probably leave them alone for now. It's the sigil of the tobacconist. You give yourself the once-over. You rub your hands all over yourself like a showgirl. You think about an alternative. You take a glance at Armand. He's dressed in fancy silks and other imported materials and has a great medallion around his neck. You can tell by his wares that he's a man who thinks he has impeccable taste, which means he's probably full of crap. Good afternoon, fair trader of smoot goods. Aha, good afternoon, young master. How are you? Better now that I know this place is here. Ah, thank you. I am Armand, purveyor of the finest tobacco and smokable leaf in all the lands. You can call me Rowan. And indeed I will, Mr. Rohan. Be assured, every item in here is of the finest quality. I have selected my imports by hand, and any purchase you make shall be a wonderful delight for you to enjoy in your leisure time. I'm a big fan of leisure time. Here, try a bit of this. That is delightful. Ah, yes. Imported Kenmati leaf from the realm of Anangoti. The finest. I must close up for a moment before the execution, but please stop by again and we can discuss the finer things I have to offer. Sounds excellent. See you soon. This is Clayton, you assume, from the embroidered name on his shirt? He's enjoying a nice pipe full of tobacco. You wonder why his eyes look so red, though. Everything in here is amazing, <clears throat> sir. I highly recommend the Sir Dave's of Romerio blend. There's a large red velvet curtain in the back. You imagine that's where he keeps his rancor. You can't go through the curtain. It would reveal the great and powerful Oz. My word! There were smokable plants and tobacco from all over the world in here. Armin does at least have taste when it comes to importing smokable leaf. You bet there used to be writing on it, but it's worn off. Look at this place. Fancy, fancy. That roof must have cost the pharmacist a pretty penny for sure. He must sell a lot of potions. Look at this place. The door is locked, but there is a man over in the garden. Perhaps you should talk to him. He's a tall, squirrely fella. You bet he's weird. Hey, you in the garden. Who? Me? No, the other fella in the garden. The one with the gnomish hat. I don't see. <laughs> you got me. Good fun. Good fun. How's it going in there? Oh, not bad. Just trying to pick some herbs for some potions I'm making up later. People always start worrying about their health after an execution. With good reason. Though I don't suppose you have a potion that really touches a head in a day. 
<laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Don't be silly. Oh, that's funny. Oof. Ah, I am Jared Smyrna, pharmacist. I'm Mr. Ruem, professional raconteur. Well, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Well, I've got to get finished up. Got to get to the execution soon. Yes, indeed. Y yes, yes, please. Come by the shop sometime. There's lots of neat things in there. I bet they'd be of use to a man like you. I'll do that. Farewell, sir. Bye. A creepy old house stares back at you. Dark, ominous, foreboding. Your kind of place. By the sigil on the door, you deduce that it is a magic shop. Can't be too bad. It has a pair of awesome gargoyles out front. Well, that's a bright and sparkly sign. You deduce that this must be the magic shop. You play around with it, but... Now, this really is your kind of place. Mysterious, abstruse, and very pentagramish. You reside in the local dealership of magic and conjury. You can't fail to notice the thin, bearded stranger sitting across the way. You see a tall, thin, bearded man behind the counter. See, are we? We're all exerted some way. How insightful. Allow me to quote that in my book of Who Cares. Ah. Now, young man, is there something I might help you with? My name? Well, you may call me Prospero. I make it most of the town calls me Mr. Magic. It amuses them. Magic? Well, that's quite a discussion. Perhaps we can converse about it when we have more time. There's an execution coming soon, and we'd better not be late. Rayford gets into quiet a tizzy about these things. Goodbye. The sigil is probably his trademark logo or something. He seems to have a penchant for the star-shaped symbols. There's some kind of hanging herb. You assume it goes to his living quarters, but you're not going back there without adult supervision. You want a wicked scepter, wicked bat. He appears to be in a hurry. Oh, hello, my lord. Oh, well, then, uh, hello. I must be on my way now. Take care. The base of the gargoyles reveal two names, Vigo and Hector. How droll. Call to the execution. You probably better make your way back to town. <laughs>